Where last we left off, my wonderful group of players had found themselves at a pool uh, set for Shan's nobility, and it or upper crust, I guess, uh, being run by the Tains, the Tain Gala, which happens on the sixth of every month. It's a fairly impressive and expensive event, and this particular one happened to co coincide with Baker's Night, um, a sort of religious tradition uh, followed by the Silver Flame Church in Eberron. And as a result, there was all manner of wonderful confectionery and concoctions bit happening in the place. Lots of things made out of candy and lollies and sweets, as well as pastries. There was also some intrigue and the announcement of an engagement, which Ruffled a few feathers, I think, across Shan as a whole, but we shall see what happens. So, yeah, our, the ball, however, left, or we left the last session, with a little bit of drama occurring at the ball. Certain magical items and magical concoctions seem to have got a little bit out of whack with everything. And, hmm. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen next? But I believe the last thing was that there was a scream to your left. So we shall go into the game scene. Invisible. There we go. So yeah, we have found ourselves in the team banquet hall and there was a scream to the left of you guys as things got a little bit haywire. What's everyone's reaction to this? Also, feel free to move your tokens where you think you are actually standing, because I know a couple of you had started wandering off. Um. Definitely not hiding from anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, if I recall correctly, wasn't there a concern with some of these uh, constructs heading towards exits? Yes. And apparently blocking the way. Yes, um, the rock candy golems that had been um, decorating and so, sort of providing a little bit of security in the room had actually started to move around. Oh my god, there's a fly on my webcam. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So they had started moving about the room and some of them had actually drifted up towards the exit. in such a way that might be construed as blocking exits. I'm... Um, okay. When you say, just out of curiosity, when you say uh, scream to our left, would that be... Which one? Is a stage this at the bottom? So we were facing the stage. Yeah, you were facing the, like, yeah. balcony title, balcony thing that's up here, and there's... That previously, that had been where the announcement was made. Okay. Uh, I'm, I mean, as soon as we, I hear a scream, I will draw my attention over to try and help people, because obviously we can see things going awry. Yeah. So if somebody screams out, I will look over and see what's going on. Yeah. I believe there was probably someone, like, some way over here maybe shouting. Oh, did that not draw? Um... Yeah, somewhere like over here or something, there was somebody shouting. And yeah, it's a one haired halfling. She just kind of lets out like a screech as one of the bubbles that had like exploded at her feet has like sent her flying up in the air and skirts are going everywhere. And she's just sort of like trying to stay balanced as she's floating and the interesting thing about this particular occasion is that she doesn't seem to be coming back down previously the potions and stuff that have been in this were quite short duration but she's just sort of there floating up around the ceiling and there's kind of another screech from behind you as somebody else gets lifted up and quite a few of the party guests are now floating above the scene and kind of they're getting a bit higher and the tame ballroom is ceiling is actually ridiculously high like 
Space is a premium in Shan, and height, vertical height, is also a premium in Shan. And the Tains are the wealthiest of all, so their ceilings are ridiculously high as a result of that. As a fairly ornate display of wealth, you're all aware. Uh. Uh, Zeke is going to start stop hiding essentially and just go ah all the cons over <laughs> then, then head back <laughs> as I notice the golems are closing in on the exits I'm just going to sprint towards the closest exit essentially I'm going to sprint okay. towards the golem that's blocking the closest exit okay they seem rather like impassive once they've got here they are literally just standing there so you mentioned uh, a halfling woman, girl? Uh, woman. Um, who is now floating. Uh, is there anyone else? Who else is floating? Because I want to try, I can't save them all, but I want to try and get underneath one of them to try and potentially catch them. Drop. Probably at this point about four or five people, just like... Floating. Okay. There's there's a lot of people in this room, and this map does not show the sheer scale of it. Like this is just sure, the sure. main part, um, because otherwise it would be ridiculously difficult to like load and stuff. But it does. I'm not a strong man, but I have a general concern for people's safety, so I'm going to try and walk over and get beneath the halfling in case she drops, so that I can try and catch her. Yeah, and she does not appear to be coming down. Um, it's just sort of like the others two, they keep keep floating till they're kind of pressed up against the ceiling. Some of them have managed to grab onto like various ornate bits and pieces that are, you know, attached to the ceiling because, again, really fancy place, lots of chandeliers, right. lots of like stuff. There's also a bunch of gargoyles and stuff on the ceiling as well that they've kind of, like, managed to, you know, contain. Although the gargoyles also appear to have been, got the candified treatment at this particular point. They're all, they all look kind of clear and sparkly in ways that they perhaps hadn't the last time you are at this ball. Right. Uh, and the, there's still a large crowd here, right? Yeah, no, this, um, admittedly, it's kind of become a little bit of a crush as people have moved sort of up towards uh, where the exit is. There's a few more golems to blocking other areas as well. Um, I'll yeah. just drag them on to the map. Um, and there's kind of people looking like they want to like get into a fight with them and stuff, but they're sort of at this particular point, these golems have started to glow a little bit. It might be the magic from the floor. It might be some other thing that's caused them to go haywire, but yes, they are all kind of have this weird, strange, magical glow about them, as they are. And the, on the floor, the potions are kind of swirling around as well. So I... Oh, go ahead. So, as Zeke walks over, wasn't Victor's little sister in that group as well and freaking out over all the potions? Like, uh, swirling around the group? Yelena is now remember. standing on a chair. Um, oh, never mind that. That solves the issue I was going to attempt to solve. And, and I don't, and I don't need enough to make it better as long as it's not actually becoming worse. <laughs> yeah, no. She's standing. And a few of the other guests have kind of like started doing this too. Perhaps the more like alchemy minded have, you know, started climbing onto various pieces of furniture and stuff like that in a bid to try and you know, keep their um, gowns and things off the floor and their feet off the floor as the potions begin to swirl and do stuff. I'd like to cast Detect Magic so I can see the magical auras on the golems and the bubbles. Okay. Go for it. Um, okay. Yep. Okay. 
Um, um. The, the magical. Sorry. Um. Would you mind just putting that into chat, please? Um. The spell. Yeah. I'm just. I need to just remember what it actually. If you mouse over the spell icon in your spell book, there'll be a little dice symbol you can click. That'll drop it straight into chat and yeah. take your spell slot, etc. Oh, yeah. Everyone needs to hit long rest, too, apparently. Um, just to, like, bring all their spell slots back, if you haven't already. Ah. Uh. Because no one has... Oh. For whatever reason, Foundry, when you set up sheets, does not actually keep the... Um, like, it doesn't give you all of your spell slots from the start. Yeah, that's weird. Okay. Um, you can think of level up things. If you level up midway through uh, something or other, you don't magically suddenly be able to cast a high level spell. Where's the rest button? Yeah, uh, at the top under hit dice. Oh, gotcha. Oh, I see it. Yep. I have my spells. I was about to cast some spells too. Go ahead, Doctor. <laughs> okay. Let's see, detect magic. So detect magic. The Okay, the whole room basically is at this particular point in time glowing around you. Um the closest thing to you, I think within thirty feet, well is um the Rowing. the closest thing to you is seems to be the fairy floss methods and they appear to be from a school of i believe transfiguration as they kind of um trans hang on yeah transfiguration I believe is the school. Mm -hmm. Transmutation. There we go. I was reading Harry Potter, but yes, transmutation um, tends to be. I need you, man. <laughs> anyway, transmutation. So they've kind of been, their forms have been modified, but the whole room is going like pretty much everyone standing around you is giving off various different pings of magic, as well as like the floor, some of the chairs, like, the potions are just like a massive mess of all sorts of random spells and stuff, um, as this okay, magic is cast. Okay, I'm specifically focusing on the constructs, um, and then I'm gonna keep concentration and just keep an eye out on all those things. Okay. Yeah. Are there any particularly large... Uh, strong-looking people next to me. Uh, there are a few around. Someone that we can reach out and, like, you here, help me. Yeah, yeah, and there's people around, and there's a few people who, like, there's a murmur of, like, people casting Featherfall and stuff. It, so, yeah, I'm, I'm basically people. having... But... I'm, I'm basically trying to get somebody lined up with this halfling woman, because I'm going to try and counter the effect that's on her. I'm going to cast a spell magic. Okay, yeah, no, there's somebody has come over and is, like, helping you. Um. Okay. So, let's see. Go to spell magic, cast spell. Got several spell slots. Um. Is the effect higher than third level? No. It Okay. Much is it works and it does dispel the magic that is on her. So she f falls, and hopefully myself and this large person that I've selected to assist me will catch her. Yeah. And they do. And she's kind of like hurriedly thanks you and then sort of tries to like find something to stand on. Um, so and that then, she's not caught up in this mess. Having succeeded at that, I'm going to shout out to just people in general, like, anyone who can help, we must get the people down from the ceiling. They're getting too high. 
Yeah, and there's a few, like this is Sean, and there's quite a few magic users, particularly among like the upper classes, and spells are being cast and flung around, and people are coming down, but the problem is that for every like two people that come down, another four or five are floating up as they're like walking through the thing, you know, like someone will get like counter spell or dispel magic down and then land in a particularly bad patch of potion and end up like floating back up again. Like <laughs> there's like just this constant flow as like the entire sure. ballroom just sort of starts like lifting, ebbing and flowing and people are sort of like waiting to see what happens a little bit. Um, is, is it wrong that I really want to tell the truth? Hang on, stop for a sec. Everybody is really garbled. Um, Brian, can you please repeat that? I can. I, I was just saying, is it wrong that I want to shout, the floor is lava? <laughs> like, instead I say, everyone off the floor. The floor is most definitely lava, or at least sticky candy. And the interesting thing is that you watch as, like, some of the little methods that are, like, fairy floss methods that are floating around the room. Every now and then, one of them will get too close to where the potions are and, like, hit it, and much like fairy floss, just kind of, like, disperse into the um, potions as they do. So it's, it's rapidly changing from just having, like, potions to having... A whole heap of like method guts in there as well. Um, but what's Victor doing? I am running towards the uh, closest golem. I'm going to try and essentially just walk past it. Oh, well, I'm not going to slow down. I'm going to try and run past it. See if it tries to stop me from exiting. Because I'm getting nervous about the way they're standing. I. Oh, game's paused, that's why I can't move, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, hang on, I can't move all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm stuck in the sticky candy. <laughs> yeah, you are. Um, and, like, as you approach, the golem just sort of seems to, like, glow a little brighter. And sort of its form becomes a little bit less rock candy and a little bit more fluid, I guess? As it Expands, expands a little bit and kind of proceeds to block more of the door. It doesn't actually, like, move aggressively. It just makes itself bigger in such a way that it... If you tried to get out, you would probably get stuck to it. Probably don't want to get stuck to it. That's fair. Okay, I'm just going to... I'll try and step away from it again and see if it shrinks down. Trying to get an idea of what these things are doing. It does a little bit, but then somebody else walks up to it and tries the same thing. And you can kind of see other groups of people pressing against them. And there's like one, like the one that's, um, the one that's kind of on the other side of the door to you or to your right basically is. It's basically just a giant sheet of rock candy now. There's very little of its face as people have tried to, like, shove against it in a bid to push past. The interesting thing about them, too... Actually, do you know what? Roll me a perception check. I should stop giving you guys info for free. Well, we don't get free information now? No. I can't see perception. I need to roll a real-life perception check to see... (laughs) Oh, that's a waste. (laughs) (laughs) The interesting thing about these golems is that um, okay, yes, the rest of you as well. Um, The interesting thing about the golems and stuff too is that they, much like the methods, are sort of melting into the potions a little bit. Um, They're not quite as... Because fairy floss, obviously, when it hits water or any form of liquid, just kind of dissolves right away, whereas these are made more from rock candy and they are a little bit harder to melt, I guess. Okay. I'm just going to look around on the floor. I am on the dance floor, but it's maybe a mistake. I'm looking for something I can chuck at it, essentially, just to see if it's sticky. (laughs) I mean, there's a, a 
where that white square is is like a big banquet hall part like pile of tables of food probably should have included that but like yeah there's a big thing so yeah. you could pretty much Soon grab then. something from the yeah i'll grab like a serving plate or a tray or something and just frisbee it at the golem hey, bun. and it kind of like swipes its hand away but the tray sticks to its hand as it tries to swish it off um it now has an improvised weapon <laughs> um not a shield to fight. <laughs> yeah. um, no, it just kind of like brushes and now it's got this like random silver platter that's probably worth like three people's annual incomes or something in the lower cities attached to its hand. Yeah, so it's please. Kind of waving it around that are and, like, here. <laughs> smashing it into like the statue that's next to it or whatever um, as it does so. All right then. I just stare at it. Yeah. Can everybody wait. please roll me a d20? <laughs> Algonon, you pro. No. Well, Algonon and Victor. As you guys are like moving around in this, you the pair of you find yourselves stepping into a particularly like bad patch of potion. Sticky and, situation. <laughs> sticky situation indeed. Um, oh, hang on. There we go. No, 16's fine. Cool. Um, Victor, you find yourself floating a little bit. Um, you started oh. on the upward trajectory of it that everybody else had. And Algonon, you're actually finding it really difficult to move through this. So you're probably not quite half speed, but you are definitely slowed down considerably as like you must have hit one of the slowness potions or potentially one of the fastness potions that has hit a, um, you know, been mixed with that many other things that it is now a slow fall or slow potion. So everybody else, I mean, it's to avoid. All I can do is try and get to a table. So. Hmm? I right. did my good deed and saved one person. <laughs> you did. Um, Zika just slowly following you around the room, not really doing anything, but staying within like 20 to 30 feet of you, just watching. Yeah. Um, Nicholas is. Do we have any? Have see Zeke following Sorry. Do I see Zeke following you? Um, I mean, you got a reasonably decent perception roll, I think, from before. So, yeah. I'm not being sneaky. But, okay. But, so. Is, is the slow potion, uh, like, clever that I stepped in, is that going to affect my speech as well? No, just your, um, movement. Are you sure you don't want it to? <laughs> <laughs> um, I wouldn't say it does. I turn slowly <laughs> and look at Zeke and say, And then I try and climb up on the table very slowly. Uh, Zeke will just shrug and he'll walk up here to within 30 feet of one and he will just use his telekinetic abilities and shove one. <laughs> uh, so it just makes a strength save but it has to move. How far does it move? I'll just put it in the chat. It'll make it easier. Okay, sorry. Who were you shoving? As much as I would love to shove, like, Victor into the construct, that isn't what I got asked. <laughs> so I'm just going to sh try and shove one of the constructs to the side, and it'll basically open up a way out. Okay, so you're shoving against the rock candy golem? Yes. The okay. Strength save. Strength save. We can do that. Yeah. Okay. So this needs to be a 15, so not a lot. Yeah, 
so that that's a thing. Um, absolutely nothing <laughs> happens. <laughs> As you shove against it. In fact, it, it maybe even appears to just sort of like adhere it to the floor just a little bit more as it's in its slightly sticky state. Has anyone got past the golems yet? Or are they blocked everyone or not letting anyone leave? They've bl- pretty much blocked everyone. And like the general vibe of this place is pretty freaked out. Like to be trapped in a room. And, like, everyone in this room is a really, pa- or, you know, a member of a powerful house. So the fact that, like, the entirety of, like, Shan's nobility or sh- the Shan 60 is in here, or most of them are in here, like, people are starting to really, like, panic as all of this plays out. There's people, like, pushing against the golems, um there's some other stuff but it's sort of it's a little bit it's not quite as perhaps um people are panicking but they haven't like full-blown lost it yet but you can also see that like there's some high people who you know are highly powerful spell casters are sitting there like you know muttering spells and waving wands and all of that sort of stuff um There's a few people with, like, weapons and stuff who are, like, stabbing or, you know, waving them around and stuff. But the problem is also that because there's so many potions on the thing, there's people that have been stuck in place, there's people who are floating, there's people whose, like, hands have been transformed into something that does not allow them to hold a weapon anymore or, like, bodies, like, they've sprouted random fur and just kind of, like... All sorts of weird potion effects. One person literally just pops and turns into a potted plant that you notice as you're kind of like staring around. Like there's just sort of this whole magical chaos. And then pretty much anyone who's got an intelligence higher than 10 is standing on a table or a chair at this point. Like there's a lot of people who are just like either not magically powerful enough to do something about it or just who don't want to be wading through you know, weird potion soup. Um, I, I'm going to follow their example and try and get on a table or a chair. Go for it. Okay. Uh, I, I think... What, what would that be? Would that be like... Uh, athletics or athletics or what? Roll me a d20 and don't roll under 10. 50 50. Oh. <laughs> One of your Oops. legs starts growing like this really thick fur, but you can move towards a table or a chair with no hassle. But you do have one really furry like leg, and it kind of like starts taking on a weird animal y shape. So you're kind of like, it's kind of like when you have one shoe on that's a little bit different to the other one. Um. <laughs> Well, you're trying on shoes in a shoe shop and you, like, put on a pair of high heel high heel boots or something, but you've got, like, sneakers on on the other foot. That's kind of like what's happening. But you do make it over to a chair or table. What about you, Serafina? What are you up to? Um, I think, yeah, I think Serafina's most prominent thought is just try and calm everyone down so we can start thinking properly and um, stop people from accidentally going into the potions or anything like that so I'm actually gonna get up on one of these tables over here and start playing a song I'm some jaunty tune um (laughs) something like yeah you know what something like you know Christina Aguilera's Candyman something that's like gent it's spoken like in the theme of what it is but it's a jaunty tune kind of thing I um, so yeah I love that I'm gonna just jump on top of a table start playing um making making a tune making a sing um and how is there quite a distance between the tables or are uh, they're quite nah. close together like each one of those 
squares is five foot um, on the like tiles and stuff on the floor. So they are quite close together. Um, I Would it be to... too much of a risk to jump between tables <laughs> as <Okay>. well? <laughs> I need you to roll three. Th- well, no, two things for me. The first is you need to roll me a straight d20. And same rules uh... about not rolling under 10 apply. Um, okay. Yeah, no, you make it onto the table, fine. Um, no weird potion effects. You manage to avoid all of the randomness. The next thing I need you to roll is a performance check. Performance? I'll be using the bandor for this as well. So I'll, so I'll have that out. Yeah. Oh, where'd it go? Ah. Yep. And you can jump between the tables. Maybe you've got a little bit of that like weird magic potion on you that makes you like super light on your feet or the floaty potion, but it wasn't enough to affect you. But yeah, you're easily jumping between tables, playing the song. And it does seem to work. It like seems to like the crowd starts settling down. Um, even some of the like little fairy floss methods that are in the room just sort of start um, floating a little bit. So, and like vibing out to your song as you're doing it. There's kind of the band and stuff that was playing has also um, started to like join in with you. They've found some. Admittedly, a couple of their members are currently floating around on the ceiling. So like, it sounds a little bit weird because like, they're not really in the proper like orchestra pit anymore, which is basically below where that um, balcony is, but they are everyone's vibing out and it does seem to calm the room down a little bit as like people are even the rock candy golems that are kind of blocking people the light that's in them is kind of flickering a little bit with in sound of the songs and a few other people kind of join in as well so you have succeeded in calming the room down and also drawn a lot of attention to yourself Okay. I think that's that's all I'm gonna do for now, but like I'm gonna try and get once I've got everybody noticed, everybody singing and dancing, I think jumping between the tables, I'm gonna probably just end up here and stay around this area close to the exits. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Okay haven't I picked on recently? Let's go back to Victor. Hello. Hello. You are currently floating. started floating. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I'm only floating upwards like everybody else was. Okay. Then I'm just going to wait and as I float upwards I'm waiting until I'm at a high level with the golem. If they have something akin to eyes. They've got kind of like a weird mannequin face, like not the like ultra Alder. realistic ones, but just kind of ones that have like the faintest like intimate um, mockery of a face, I guess, or mimicry of That's a face. High enough for me. Yeah. I'm waiting until I'm about to eye level with the golem. Yeah, and and then <laughs> go on. No, you go. All right. As I raise up to eye level with it, I just shake out my left hand and so it's almost as if it's dropping out of my sleeve a long thin whip appears in my hand I'm just going to whip it forwards towards the face of the golem attack roll yep oops bloody basic foundry attack rolls (laughs) um yeah that does actually hit I believe It does. So, I'll do for me. Do you want to roll some damage? Well, I could, but my hope is it gets stuck in there. And it kind of does. Fair as enough. And now, okay, so I was, yeah. You're now a very beard looking balloon. Excellent. Exactly where I wanted to be. <laughs> oh. And as it. As the whip gets stuck on the golem, I'm just going to wrap it around my wrist and just pull myself towards the golem, feet first. 
Yeah, and you succeed. Yep. Excellent. And much closer to the golem. So I'm just trying to get my feet stuck to it right now. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing about actually, the interesting thing about this golem is that you seem to be getting like almost pulled down a little bit by it. Like it's shrinking, or it's just like it's making shrinking. me descend. Okay. Um, as the potions that are kind of, you can kind of see them like they're lapping up against it. Um, okay. Stuff. So it's been affected by something that's causing it to shrink. Yeah. Fair um, enough. The one that's kind of in the middle is in this weird situation where it's kind of almost like healing up the um, sides of the wall as like it's obviously been hit by the levitation potion and is kind of like it's moving up but it's moving up very slowly because it is stuck like adhered to the floor at this point so you can kind of see it like being pulled against it and the like sticky situation is kind of like dragging it up but it is kind of <laughs> it's trying to float but it just sort of is what too well stuck um but there's bits of it that kind of like lift up and then it kind of ebbs back down the other thing is too now people have stopped moving through it as much because everyone's either floating or they're standing on tables and chairs for the most part is that these potions have stopped sort of swirling together as much and they're just sort of sitting there a whole sea of shimmering colors this is maybe a silly idea but are there still cups or mugs or some glasses on the tables yeah yeah there's lots of various different um Glasses, bowls, crystal goblets, metal goblets. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to take one of the metal goblets and try and scoop up some of the potion from below without touching it. Yeah. And you do that. And it's a swirling mass of all different sort of shimmery blues and pinks and are there any golems within throwing distance <laughs> what have we got here you could probably hit one of the fairy floss methods you might need to um just like walk towards say one of the golems a little bit more Okay, that would involve. Oh wait, I I moved to a table, so yeah, yeah. So I guess in order to do that, I would have to start uh, table hopping. Yeah. So. Uh... <laughs> I will let you decide as to whether or not it is athletics or acrobatics. Um, well, it's you... it's definitely going to be acrobatics. <laughs> if you're doing acrobatics, though, you need to describe how you're doing it in some ridiculously like acrobatic -y kind of way. Um, like maybe you're doing flips um, between tables or something like that. Um, <laughs> I am going to balance on the back of the chair and then try and jump to a chair at the next table to try and minimize the distance I have to go. Yeah. All right. That is... Okay. A <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, you kind of make it across. There's a few moments where you think you're going to fall. Um, it's a little bit weird because you've got like this one leg that's kind of a little bit strange compared to the other ones. So that kind of makes it mm -hmm. awkward. But you do succeed in getting 
at least somewhat closer. Okay, so like two tables maybe? Uh, you could probably go up to the um, up to where Serafina is. You managed to make it onto their table. Okay. So that should put them put me in range of a go of a golem. Sure. Okay. Let's see. I'm not as familiar with this, but let's uh So I guess Um I think that this one is actually going to be an athletics check. Oh, okay. I don't think there's like a throwing thing. No. Although Kadari may know more about how whether or not Foundry has something like that in it. Or throwing objects. Yes. Yeah. Uh per the rules, improvised weapons are always strength. Most people would rule that throwing things is dexterity, but Rules is written. It's strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyone object? I kind of am with Kadari on this in that oh, I think dexterity. It's a straight attempt <laughs> you are not proficient with because it's improvised. Yeah. Right. So. Cool. Yeah. No. You hit. Okay. <laughs> um. So, um, does it have any effect? It kind of manages to melt a little bit of the golem as it hits. And you can kind of see parts of this have been hit with some form of levitation potion because like where it's melted, little bubbles of candy have come off it and are just floating upwards. Um, can you roll me a d4, please? Okay. Oh, whoops. Okay. Uh, ignore that. I accidentally... Yeah, no, that's... Oh. There. Yeah. You do, like, two, two points of damage to this thing, though, as it takes it. But they don't seem to be that interested in fighting. They're kind of, like, copying all of it. There's literally two at this point. Some people have actually got stuck to these golems, where they've been, like, pounding against them or hitting them, and their hands have kind of, like, melded into the golems. Um, but they do appear to be getting shorter, so... Yes, also there's a bunch of these fairy flossom efforts, you like see them every now and then. This Maybe the magic's wearing off them, you're not 100% sure, but several of them just keep falling into the thing and kind of flowing out in this kind of weird bluey pink section of stuff. The floor colouring is getting a little bit muddy. I guess at this point, because rainbow colors being mixed together have kind of created this very bizarre um, sort of shimmer as they have settled in and dispersed among one another. Okay. The room has pretty much mostly settled too. People have sort of calmed down a little bit. The people on the ceiling don't look overly thrilled about life, to be fair. But if everyone could give me another perception roll as they are staring around the room. A bunch of you seem to be caught up in what's going on with potions, which is fine. Um, Serafina, you're probably the only one to notice that there appears to be sort of a weird shifting of the golems on the ceiling. You kind of happen to just glance up and catch a flick, or not sorry, the gargoyles on the ceiling. You kind of happen to catch like a flick of a wing um, 
as one of these golem things or one of these gargoyles that had previously been um, up there has sort of started coming a bit more to life and it's sort of there's then a creaking sound as the rest of you guys become aware of it and it sort of floats as it pushes away from the ceiling and starts flying above. So I think like in between a verse in the song, um, I'm going to turn to those that are still attempting and just, you know, to extra draw their attention, it's like eyes up. Um, and just, I think I'm going to probably try and trail off the song because I don't think I can keep everybody calm <laughs> if everybody sees this. So <laughs> I'm going to hope that the band and everybody keeps it going, but I'm going to trail off. Yeah, and the band do kind of like keep it going. I don't think it... any. There's been a few people who have noticed it, but like it's sort of... There's that much other stuff happening in the room. They do, however, notice when it like just drops down and kind of starts flying and then landing in the middle of the treats table, giving like this god awful roar as it does so. And its wings kind of like flutter around um, as much as candy can. It's got this weird like thing to it where it's like, it's almost too hard like to be flying like that like it looks really brittle and shattery as it does so it's like the, its wings are just not soft enough to be wings but they are and it does fly and it kind of sweeps them around and sends dishes and stuff that were on the table skidding across the floor and across the thing one of them seems to almost land in a particularly dense patch of potion and seems to almost dissolve with a hiss um as it does so but it just yeah it stands there and it roars and the golems against the doors suddenly start glowing more they take on this really unnatural blue hue that kind of permeates it's not a pleasant color to look at i'm beginning to be I'm afraid of all of these things exploding. Um, yeah. I don't um, know that there's anything I can do about it. <laughs> can Zeke pick up any discarded, like, metal chalice or anything around him if there is? Yeah. There's one. Okay. Uh, yeah, he picks it up and uh, pulls out a screwdriver from his coat that he definitely was not supposed to bring, but he wasn't leaving it. <laughs> yeah. It like morphs into a small hammer while he's pulling it. Is it Sonic? <laughs> no, but I can change it to any useful tool. <laughs> which lets me uh, turn it into, what's it called, Smith's tools and use my Eldritch Cannon ability. So I turn this, li this tiny little, um, what do you call it, goblet into a very small force ballista. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah. I've just been messing around for a while now, but I've just gone, okay, yeah, th 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 this isn't as good anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll just, like, toss it to the side of me, uh, so it's, like, not right there, and then I'll just kind of, I can use bonus action to shoot it, so I will shoot it with my fourth ballista. <laughs> Go for it. I think I have that on your sheet. If not, um... Um... Oh, so I have a lot of things in my sheet. Yeah. Uh, if not, it's just my D20 plus various things. So my yeah. proficiency plus my intelligence. And I don't know if my plus one magic uh, thingy to attack factors into this. Okay, well... I mean, it's a it ranged spell attack. Yeah, it's a ranged spell attack originating from you. So anything that... Right. Like, the effect originates from the cannon. It's your stats. So any yeah. effect that affects your spell attacks affects it. Yeah. So go for yeah, it. I've not got a I don't have a thing for it. Yeah, so I'll just roll a D20 and then do math. Yeah, that sounds like Oh my god, math. 
I know it. That's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so that is plus eight, I think, to hit. Yeah, that hits. I'm not even going to make you do any more math. <laughs> And then it takes this much force damage and is thrown five feet away uh, from where the, it was shot from with a cannon. Okay. So, and it does. Uh, it gets kind of flung back. I could have been really nasty and thrown it into Algonon, but I did not. So, um... I, mean, I, mean, I wasn't quite an, an, enough of an asshole to angle it that way, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh. Um, so yeah, it takes seven points of force damage. Is that right? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, I can do that. And then, yeah, I think we might actually be heading into a break. So but I will, mm. however, have everybody roll me initiative. Um, okay. Because you have actually first. attacked this thing at this point. In such Wasn't a way. Also, the combat tracker first. I want to take initiative rolls. Oh, yeah, that's true. We should do that. Um, which is just. Yeah, sorry. It's been a little while since I've used Foundry to, to run combat. Hey. Cool. Big. Boom. Oh. Okay. Well, Seraphina beat me. <laughs> Where last we left off, we are now heading into combat, I believe. So. Serafina, what are you up to? Um. So I think. Where is it? What was I gonna do? Yeah. So I think I just need to double check because it moved. I mean, sixty foot in the middle of it. That's that counts, doesn't it? Um. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to like be at the end of it for it to be within the 60 foot range, does it? As long no, as, as long as you can hit any part of it. It's occupying nine squares. Pick one. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm essentially, I'm just going to um, cast Vicious Mockery at it and just just shout at it, calling it, oh, you, you're just a Piece of candy, you're already melting, you're just not worth anything. Go back, open the ceiling, and be nothing like you like you already are. And, you know, <laughs> just be rude as fuck. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, so it needs a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Wisdom saving throw, coming right up. Um, oh shit, what do I need to, what does it need to beat? Apparently a DC of 16, however it did roll a no, wow. 20. Because apparently I'm rolling well tonight, all this morning. So, and it just kind of like sticks its tongue out at you, which is this weird sort of crystalline rock candy thing as you say this. Yeah, I'm just going to fur my brows back in like, hmm, I just think of something else. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's all I'm doing in this one. Yeah. Algonon? Is this thing being aggressive? It didn't really us. It's kind of roared, and it did not particularly appreciate being hit by Zeke. Um, as it's, like, moving around. And We've been aggressive of... to it. <laughs> yes, basically. <laughs> that's <what> you're my <laughs> <laughs> Um, it, so, are there a lot of people 
considering the cardinal directions, are there a lot of people, say, in a line to the southwest of it? Um, most, no, <laughs> there's no one really behind it. Like, it's, everyone's pretty much moved and is either floating or is, you know, on a table or chair at this point. I so. think it understands what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Just such a D&D &D question. Not to plan to cast this, but lots of people in a line southwest. <laughs> <laughs> we know what you're doing. <laughs> okay. This thing is huge, right? Like, this isn't a mistaken token size. Like, this is a very large Yeah, it's thing, massive. Right? It, it's massive. Okay. Because it was a originally a gargoyle on the ceiling that has been turned yeah. into some sort of candy monstrosity the gargoyles sure. are a lot larger because they're so far away they kind of need to be big to be in order to be visible sure yeah, yeah. Um, so that you can see the artistry of yeah, course exactly um, and all the like yeah. normal gold inlay and gems and stuff that they usually have yeah. which have been okay. replaced by candy I need to destroy thing of architectural beauty um i guess i'm just gonna go ahead and hit it with the lightning bolt okay <laughs> so you know weaving my hands saying the arcane words pulling the appropriate uh, components from my uh, my pouch I will yep. consume a spell slot. Okay, it needs to make a dexterity saving throw by the looks of things. Yep. Fifteen. Yeah, it fails that. Let's go ahead and roll the damage. Nice, as your spell kind of like clacks into it um, and ripples through it with a like a massive creak as it does so. One of its wings gets a little bit like shattered as this happens. Oh, and also that method thing needs yeah. to make one as well. My bad, sorry. There's a few people on tables who are probably not overly thrilled with you, but like, we're not going to worry <laughs> about them. Um, <laughs> we're just going to assume that like every single They've one of got them time has to a ridiculous high. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, the fairy floss method that you hit um, basically explodes as the lightning like slams into it as well and it kind of sinks into the thing. There's this weird like almost an explosive bubble as it hits the water. Hey, thanks for the resub, Scoon. Um, yeah, so it's basically dead at this point. Where you've hit it and it does it very much just like explodes um upon impact so uh, I'm going to attempt to uh move hastily away hopefully i'm not within its reach i guess if i was it would have been able to well i'm not gonna worry about that um I mean, it you don't know how to get rid of that template of opportunity. Um, right? Yeah. <laughs> because I do think that you are probably very much within its melee range. So right. it will take a swipe at you. Also, too, you are kind of like a little bit slowed. Not massively, but still. Sure. It's not sure. moving as quickly as you possibly should be. So it kind of rakes at you with one of its wings. Um. But I'm guessing an eight does not hit you. 
Ah, não consigo. 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 Sorry, go ahead. It kind of just rakes over your head. Um, as you I will then move away. What, at like half speed? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Or, I don't okay, know. So yeah, I just, I just wanted to create a little distance. Yeah. As you do so. Oh, good. And the template disappeared. Good. So. Yeah. Okay, who's up next? In our little combatty ordery thing, Victor, what are you up to? You're currently floating on a wig like a really on a whip, like a really weird ass balloon. That's a true. It's not working out for me. <laughs> uh, it's going to be awkward. I'm going to try something crazy. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and build up some momentum so I can. Swing the wand on my whip to kick off uh, the wall here. <laughs> <laughs> so that I can launch myself to my <laughs> Okay, you, you were a little bit garbled, but the gist of this I got was that you were basically going to try and springboard using your whip to like launch at something? At the gargoyle, yes. Okay. I'm not even sure what like role is appropriate for that, so. Go for it, I guess. Um, I'm guessing it'd be like an athletics or an acrobatics one, depending on how like flamboyant you make it. It's flamboyant. <laughs> um, I'm not doing this by half measures. I'm going to try something in the sky. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, when I sent out the player's guide for this, just for anyone one who's watching at home, I was basically like, combat is going to be very loose in this. Um, I don't think an 11 is, like, enough, but I will say that you, like, collide with the fairy floss method as you do this and kind of, like, shove it down into the thing. Like, you basically land on top of it and kind of, like, push it down into the potions where it explodes. Um, oh, crap. Can I get a dexterity saving throw from, throw from you? <laughs> Yes, one second. I closed my carriage sheet somehow. I keep doing this. Oh, good. You need to get above a seven. Yeah. That's good. I can roll in as well. No worries. Um, you don't take any damage from the explosion, but there is a lot of, like, random potion stuff. Actually, also, Zeke, can I get one from you as well? Same deal. Oops. Uh, I will... No, you roll me a d4. Oh no. Um, as this potion gets... It was started. entirely unrelated to me. <laughs> three. Don't know how that happened. You're gonna take three points of... damage? Explosion damage. Yeah. That... I wouldn't say bludgeoning, but you're basically being splashed with spicy water, so that doesn't really count, unless it's like high- Splashing damage. Yeah. Also, you are now floating, um, Victor. Excellent. Free floating. Um, yep. is there anything else you would like to do? Uh, we got my arms up and see if I can move on. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably <what> doing now. <laughs> Yeah, you can move sort of floating through the air, but you're just going up. Like, that's the kind of thing that's happening. Oh, that's here. fine. No problems with going up. I mean, down, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Really coming down isn't the problem, it's the stopping. <laughs> I'm gonna swim through the air as far as I can towards <laughs> the golden man, I guess, with the rest of my time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna say that you could probably get like maybe three grid squares. Does that sound fair? It's kind of halved because you're kind yeah. of going up. I moved about half my speed already anyway, so that yeah. makes sense. Um, Radio. Who's up next? 
uh, the fairy floss method that is dead, and then there's another one who just sort of flutters up and starts moving around. Oh god, I closed that character sheet, didn't I? That was helpful. Very helpful. Um, but yes, it just kind so of... That's what like... I keep doing. <laughs> to be fair, I do have a lot of them open. Um, okay, it's got 30 feet of movement. That was what I wanted to check. Some of these don't. Just um, double click a token. Double click a token, it'll open the appropriate uh, sheet. So... It kind of starts fluttering over towards you, Argonon, as it gets there. Apparently I can't, anyway. Um, and it is going to... Breathe? With a, like, sticky... Sickly burst as it does so. It says steam breath, but it's actually not. It's very much sticky breath. Yeah. Um. So, can you please make me a DC ten dexterity saving throw, please? I will attempt to do so. Uh. As you're caught up in this thing's breath. Click on dexterity. Yeah, dexterity is saving through. Uh, which I believe is accounting that. Looks like it might be. Okay, yeah, I think it is. All right, good. Yeah, no worries. You basically managed to avoid it. Um, or avoid a lot of it, but you will take two points of fire damage as this, you're basically showered with a sort of sickly, um, sweet liquefied sugar, basically. Probably not great for your beard, to be fair. In fact, this may end up being more psychic damage than um, fire damage, depending on how you feel about having sticky stuff in you. It's getting out of everything again. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it kind of does that, and then that's basically going to be its turn. Um, Luckily, I did manage to pull my cloak of protection in front of me as it leaves on me, so maybe it's not quite in my beard. We'll yeah. see. Um, so but yeah, that's off my cloak. Um, Laurie, you're up. Um, let's see. Am I within 30 feet of the big gargoyle thing? No. It's 60 feet okay. next to me. Well, oh, yeah. uh, in that case, I'm going to reach it and give it a chilly touch. Okay. Which I'm not sure how to automate this, but I believe that I have this set up for my role. Well, apparently not. Uh, Just <laughs> mouse over the sp in your spell book. And there'll be a dice symbol and left of name. Yeah, that. I did think I added yeah. like a bunch of that stuff to it. Like everyone should have spells and stuff. Okay, I have the spell. I'm just not seeing the. The icon is gone. Oh, if you listen to over it, yeah, it will change to a dice symbol. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, excellent! That didn't have a role associated with it at all. <laughs> Does eleven hit? No, it doesn't, unfortunately. Right. Okay, that's my turn. <laughs> okay, cool. One of these other fairy floss method. Whoops! Did I just kill that one? Has died. 
Yeah, apparently. <laughs> on this side again. Um, <laughs> I'm touching the me. potions. Yeah, no, these these things, like, they keep just fluttering the tiniest bit close and then, like, the littlest bit of them touches. You've seen this happen to, like, probably about 30 of them at this point as, like, this kind of, like, situations dragged on. Also, too, some people on the tables have literally started grabbing any of them that are nearby and, like, pushing them into the potions, occasionally managing to touch a floating potion themselves and ending up all over the place. Way. Um, I wonder how they taste. Such a weird thing to think. <laughs> there's a couple floating past you, so who knows? Yeah, grab one. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. But yeah, this particular method is basically going to start moving. Let's have it go over towards Victor. Um, if I can, you know, not be using a measuring thing as it kind of like flutters up and it is going to break at you with its Shit. claws. This is not a fair fight, you have wings. I do not have wings. However, it rolled a five, so, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> Aha! It doesn't seem to really do much as it's like, it does, however, leave some weird sticky prints on your like outfit, which might be a little bit annoying, but yeah, that's basically. I have people for that. <laughs> basically, it's turn. The giant thing in the center of the room, however, it is going to give a roar, a massive echoing roar. And then kind of move along the table. It will. Can you move? No? Oh. No, you should be able to move. It is not moving along the table. Why are you not moving? Okay. It moves up as well, and it's going to try and like rake up at you, Victor, as it does so, as you're kind of floating over its head. Oh, uh, what the hell? Um, it will make two attacks with its weird rock candy claws. Um, oh no, one, it's going to bite at you and it will use its claws. So, That's fun times. Does a 17 hit you? It does. Oh, maybe not for you. It does a whole way. <laughs> Five points of damage as it rakes across you, across you with its claws. I also don't know why this thing's health is doing that. But anyway, oh no, it's because of methods underneath. That's fine. But yes, it does. It rakes against you as you, and kind of almost pushes you up a little bit as it does so. I don't know. That's the wrong way. The more concerning part about this is that this kind of like loud echoing thing seems to, there's like other cracking sounds happening and kind of other <laughs> roaring sounds occurring around the room as a couple of others appear out of the ceiling and start moving around. People who were like in front of them. Um have suddenly found themselves pushed down or out of the way as these other two appear from the ceiling and just sort of start carrying on within the room as well. Zeke, what are you up to? Uh, so can... Zeke look up at the floating victor and uh, just shout out to him, he wants to be closer to this thing, right? As he casts Scorching Ray. Yes, get me closer. Uh, so I'll do the attacks first. So one, 
Yeah, that hits. I, I believe there's three attacks. Yeah. Yep. That one. Cool. Lovely. Full 20. Yeah. Um, roll damage. Nice. And then tell me how you want to do this. <laughs> Oh well, god damn, I thought they were stronger. <laughs> that's one damage, that's the critical hit damage. That's the other damage. Yeah, no. Yeah, no so <laughs> yeah, so I'm just gonna melt it into a pile of goo, but because I was trying to do two things at once, <laughs> I might not I, I might uh telekinetically shove you towards it as I'm doing that, not realizing I've <laughs> You know, melted it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, the that golem basically explodes into nothingness and dies. Um, Wait, where does it go? As it's kind of this melted plastic candy looking stuff mm. pours from and the ground. And gets shoved into the floor. Where's the <laughs> magic? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you, can make, you can make a save against it if you want. <laughs> and yeah, Victor kind of gets shoved down. Do you want to make me... I feel bad for kind of doing this, but do you want to make a dexterity saving throw as you're like trying to avoid all of this like Melton sugar from the Scorching Ray? I'm not trying to avoid anything. Somebody shoved <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> Almost I'm trying to get in this spot. <laughs> <laughs> eh, you managed to avoid it. Um, DC was like 10, so that's cool. Um, as it, yeah, there's like just a whole heap of melting sugar pouring down. The other thing about it is too that that method was underneath it. So you managed to take that bastard out as well. Um, as I'm it literally down, just explodes <laughs> um, from underneath. Is that the one? No, that was not the one. Uh, that one was already dead, though. Because that's the one that exploded when I touched it. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one that's under it is seven. One initiative seven. Ah, uh, there we are. That one? Yep. Apparently, I've killed off more of these things, but honestly, like, they keep killing themselves, so it's fine. Oh, <laughs> as they're moving around and maybe other people are helping you too there are spells being cast and at this particular point in time the rock candy golems have basically like they're not looking overly great because people have been casting spells with them in a bit to try and get them to melt they're also kind of melting through the floor a little bit but your current issues are more these guys who are literally just flying around looking for people to attack. Since you guys seem to be making targets of yourselves, you are the obvious choices. The other thing is too, this is kind of occurring all throughout the ballroom, like there's other parts further down where people are taking on more of the ceiling golem things. So that's fun. But yeah, these guys have had their go. Um, Serafina, what are you up to? Um... Seeing there's more that come down, um, I'm going to start. I'm going to focus on this one below us. Um, so first of all, I'm going to use my bonus action and give bardic inspiration to Mori. Oh, how do you use a billy? Yeah, so I'm going to um, give that to Mori as I then start moving a couple of tables closer to the big guy. Thank you. So I'm just okay, I'm probably going to end up here. Yeah. yeah. I might ask for an acrobatics or and or athletics, depending on how creative you want to get as you move between tables. Oh, I'm going to be fancy as fuck. Um, I'm, li I'm literally like so I'm probably going to stand there turn to um, this this one and then I'm then going to like undo the buttons on my jacket like fling it open behind me out of the way 
um, put my bandor in one hand, just like pat Mori on the on the side and just say, you got this, and give him the inspiration. And then do a jump and a flip over to the other table and just like end up with one knee on the on the table the other like it's almost like a superhero landing but i flipped into it onto the table and just staring nice. at this guy so that's uh acrobatic yeah yeah you mostly succeed there's a little bit of a wobble as you land um but yeah you pretty much do exactly what you intended to do somebody claps nearby <laughs> Okay. Yeah, <laughs> hey, that's all I need. That's all I need. It looks like a, <laughs> either a very young-looking, like old halfling, or like a small child. But at the same time, you do manage to attract attention. Um, anything else you'd like to do? Um, I th- yes. What I'm going to try and do is, um. I'm going to use my band or start um, playing some tunes and use that to cast Entangle uh, on... What's this? How do I draw a 20 foot square? The, which Is it the L ruler? I think when you cast a spell, it pops up. Entangle It'll give you a template. Of putting it oh, okay. Ooh, okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna do entangle there to hopefully try and restrain it. Oh, I'll have it make it strength saving throw. There's several people on the table who are not overly <coughs> thrilled with you because they were unfortunate enough to get caught up in that, but also they're currently like near enough to a. Um... They didn't run away. It's... Yeah, exactly. They didn't. Like... Cl- they didn't clap either. So you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that fails. <laughs> fails at strength saving. Oh, cool. I was actually really considering not doing it. It's like, mm, well, they're kind of big. I'm sure they'd be strong, but okay. Cool. They, they are kind of strong, but like also this thing rolled two. So yay for <laughs> it, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, no, and it kind of... What do your vines look like or your entangle spell? Um. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. I think it would probably be. It's close to obviously it's going to be vines, but it's a close to actual. Because my whole being is flaunting the pure opulence and the grandness that I have. It's close envisioned envisaged to golden chains kind of thing. As close to as, as uh, I possibly can get that with still being vine-like, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Nice. I love that. Um, and yeah, this thing is now currently trapped on the table, and it's not very happy about it. It roars and kind of struggles against the vines. Um, several people who have also found themselves adhered to the tables are also less impressed. Um, and they're kind of like pulling away, trying to lean as far away from this thing as possible, but not quite capable of moving. Um, Oops. <laughs> the halfling that was rescued earlier does, however, manage to slip out between them and kind of like stands on the table and is just kind of staring up at this thing. Um, so yeah, it remains trapped. Anything else you'd like to do? Or can do? Um, no, I think... Yeah, I think I'm gonna stay where I am for now. Um, just watching, watch, keeping an eye on that for now. Yeah. Algonon. Okay, so I'm gonna do it just because it's funny. Um, I'm gonna kind of reposition myself here and try and climb up onto this table to get out of any potential further, you know, fluids. I know a lot of the fluid is kind of, I don't know, evaporating, I guess, or magically dissipating, but, um, and I'm going to hope that a lot of people over 
Ivy entangled creature have gotten like dove out of the way because I just can't pass up two of them in a line like that. Um, That's fair. Are they both in position to where? Well, here's a question. So the one on the table, or the one over among the tables, the entangled one. These are tall, right? Yeah, they are. Um, so you- Would I be able to angle the, my, say, you know, I don't know, a lightning bolt in a way that it's kind of angling upwards and hitting through both of them without hitting people that are maybe oh. also entangled on those tables? And okay. Sure. You, you manage know, to you weave know, it in such a way pass. that it moves through the thing, um, hitting the two sure. creatures that it needs to hit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that again then. And Ooh, it's tight, but I get him. <laughs> yeah. Um, He's like right on there. Dexterity saving throws. I don't even have an option for a critical hit. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah, and they basically, that lightning spell slams into both of them. Um, Does 31 points of damage each. Yeah, does 31 points of damage. You both. As your lightning spell, anything else you want to do? Bonus action? You've moved, so. No, I'm just going to, you know, try and stay on this table and hope that nothing comes after me. Fair. Oh, no, I will shout at people around me like, head for the exits. You know, if these massive things are flying around, we should get people out of here. Yeah, people are definitely starting to move towards that, and a few of them kind of look around. There's, like, people helping each other across, like, the tables and things as they do so. A few of the more, like, energetic bards are doing flips and stuff, and you see someone try and do a flip and do the NPC equivalent of rolling in that one and basically landing in the potion, wherein they start floating up towards the ceiling while sprouting fur because they hit way more potion patches than they should have. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, you basically just kind of see that. Okay, who's up next? Victor, what are you doing? You're currently floating. Probably I'm having a lot of trouble with this air thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am going to try and propel myself forward some. <laughs> Go for it, half speed. I've not figured out this mechanic yet. I'm just wiggling my arms and legs and hoping. Yeah. yeah. Crap. I can't get close enough. Uh, and as I sort of wiggle my way there, see it's not working very well. I just reach out my hand to the side and flick my wrist, and a long rapier forms in my hand. I'm just going to lob it at the thing. <laughs> go for it. Um... Second. Uh, 30, so 13 to 13. Does not hit. Bastard. Flies <laughs> up into the distance. <laughs> Maybe you like shatter through one of its wings, but it doesn't seem to actually like cause any major effects or damage to it as your rapier just kind of sails off. Um, Maybe lands on one of the tables or something. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Nearly, nearly skew as a dwarf who kind of like glares over at you. We'll not forget this. And then just yes, yes. Of... <laughs> Someone throw me a rip or something. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it for me. Yeah. Um, where are we? We are up to the rock candy golem's turn, and it can't move. 
So it's going to like very frustratedly roar. I believe it gets another dexterity saving throw at the end of its turn. Uh, it's strength for oh, strength Entangle, but yes. I did well, use its action to do it because it needs yeah. to struggle out. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it still did not get enough to succeed, so that's its turn over and done with, and we're moving on. Um, Murray, what are you up to? I think you, you are muted. muted. Yep. Yeah, you're muted, mate. You're muted, Dyer. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking it might be worthwhile opening up an exit for people. So um, I am going to go for the golem that is uh, blocking the door. I know that I would have to go through another one, but... Um, Actually, no, I changed my mind. I'm going to cast Reduce on the one that is entangled. It gets a constitution save. Sure. Um, do you want to put that into your chat? And I will... You just need to click the little dice next to your next to the spell, because then it also takes it off your spell list and makes tracking spells a lot easier. And I, too, actually really um, like having the spell thing there so I can make sure that I'm doing things properly. Unfortunately, wow. <laughs> yeah. for whatever reason, my saving throws are either really good or really bad, so that doesn't work. Um, but... Well, it was worth the shot. Yeah. <laughs> As it kind of just roars at you. Yep. Uh, I'm going to hold up kind of where I am, but next time I might move towards the exit and try and stab something. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everything else is dead. Zeke, what are you up to? The last scorching ray went really well. Um, Fair. So, uh, remind me for it. Do I have to choose a target before I cast it? So, I, so the spell might still hit something already dead, or can I choose one and see if it's dead and keep going? I'm going to be honest. I'll turn multiple rays. Um. I think you can target each ray individually. Like you can yeah. do one at a time. Yeah. And fairly. Yeah, there's a separate attack, which yeah. ray can be in the going. I am honestly cool if that is a thing because, like, you're a spellcaster, yeah. you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, so the first one will target the restrained one, which I think is me advantage. Yeah. yeah. So roll attack. Um, the 19 definitely hits. I'll take four damage. Yep. That also hits. Nine damage. Still alive. Um. Yep. Eight next one. That hits. And still three fire damage. And as a bonus action, uh, my tiny little uh, arcing cannon toying around on its little legs is going to shoot the other one. Yeah. So shoot. That hits. That also does damage. Okay. So. Going to back away a little bit. Oh, and the big thing gets pushed five feet further. I, I keep throwing this thing at my guardian, and I've just realized <laughs> where it's going. <laughs> um. 
This seems like a very deliberate choice to me. <laughs> that was me not paying attention to where you were, unfortunately. <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah, and it does. That one will move. Five feet that way. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? It's from the way again. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Are you not in the turn order? I feel like you should be. No, apparently not. We, no, that was you? Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, that one for whatever reason was not in the turn order, so that's cool. Maybe it was the other one that was not in here too. I get a little bit confused sometimes. Oh no, because that one's dead. Never mind. Um, yeah, so that one is basically going to make an attack roll it's going to move towards you and make an attack roll um as yep. it does so it is going to bite and it is going to use claws um i definitely should have downloaded the thing that kadari told me to and i did not uh 16 and 22 either one of them hit um, I would cast field to yeah. prevent being struck by the 16. Yeah. And the 22 doesn't hit, so. The 22 does. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Damage. Yeah, my, the shield only brings me up to. 18 against that single attack. Cool. You take six points of slashing damage. Um, the other thing that I'm actually going to do for this too... You foul fiend. Um, it also manages to step in a particular potion and it is now slowed. Oh. Not as much as I am. So we're conversationally at the same speed. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> it's not possibly fast to dodge. It's just really only fast to dodge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it is. It's um, definitely slowed down a little bit. If I can. I wish I could join the cat stream. If you're slow, did your lightning bolt go across the room at slow speed? <laughs> That's an interesting question. <laughs> the golem just did that. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like the, the really slow motion lightning strikes you see? That'd be really cool looking, actually. Yeah, it would be. Um, so yeah, it's currently slowed down because it did take a weird um, step into a motion that it probably shouldn't have. Um, apparently there isn't actually a slow thing, so we're just going to use the net. Anyway, it's not restrained, but it is slowed. So, fun times. Um, yeah, and I believe that takes us back up to the top of the round. Um, yeah. Um, I don't have anything to damage. So, <laughs> um, somebody else can have bardic inspiration. Oh, you're just out of reach. You're the one that really needs it, Victor, and you're just out of reach. <laughs> Get closer. You. <laughs> you said your table acrobatics. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to... See, there's one thing I'm... No, I've, I was thinking, like, so... If I was to break a chair and, like, get a leg, is that still... Um... Like a improvised weapon or would it kind of technically be a club? simple weapon I'm proficient I mean go for it if that's what you would like to do um... 
Bombs are quite literally just an improvised weapon that you put on the Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> It's so... a bit of what you hit someone with. <laughs> the most improvised weapon. Yeah. Do I swing the chair? Do I break it and swing a club, which I'm proficient with? <laughs> the chair has four legs. If you break it, you could swing two clubs. That's like true. Many attacks. Oh no. Maybe that's... if you're your foot dexterous. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let me just do it. I. And I can't use that again. Because I I just imagine that I wouldn't have brought my rapier to this. Yeah, no, that's the fair. Ball, so, um... Yeah, no, if you want to grab a club, I'm not going to, like, complain about it. As I said, combat's pretty loose in this. Um... Yeah, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... just keep mine up my sleeves. You should try it. <laughs> <laughs> um... I will... So, I'm going to do some fancy shenanigans again. Um, so have I seen you? You're still quite okay. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do my I'm gonna actually put my bundle back on my back, however, I, I can't think of how it was like attached, but it's got some fancy attachment to the back of his cloak. Um <sighs> Do some more like fancy flips over. Nope. To here. Um. Grab one of these chairs. Break off the leg. So if I if I do that that um that as an action, can I still attack and do a bonus, or would that be my bonus action to be able to like, create a weapon? Like how would that kind of work? I will say that peak, like grabbing the chair is a bonus action and the attack okay. is a action. Okay. Somebody remind me of that the next time this comes up. The next time it comes up that we're smashing up chairs to make these clubs. <laughs> yeah, yes. pretty much. I feel like this is going to happen fairly frequently, so, you know. <laughs> I think I was really saying there's going to be some bank with all that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, okay, so I'll do that, and then I'm just gonna head straight in and just just whack it, just to try my best. I don't know how well this is actually gonna go for me. Yeah. Um, Hang on, I could probably add a club to your sheet if that's helpful. So I think even with the entangle, I could probably just I can just about get there. Do some sweet flips over all the difficult terrain, you'll be fine. There you go. You've now got a club on your sheet. Okay, nice. So, um, how do I, t can I target? Uh, double right click. Not that it does anything in this system, but. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've um, gone over, got my club, and then just try it, just just hit it in the knees. Just give it a good old whack as best as I can. Yeah. Uh, attack. Uh, yeah. I think that's right. <laughs> Your improvised chair club thing basically gets stuck in the or attached to this thing. It had like potion on the end of it. And it was wet, and when wet stuff comes into contact with sugar, it kind of like gets stuck, and you kind of have to pull it out rather than actually doing any damage. Um. Yeah, so you might just get stuck there and just like just looking up at this now. It's like, um... <laughs> well, you know where you can find three more of those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just imagine she was a whole chair next time, you know, instead of just a leg. <laughs> Oh well, hit it with a top bit of the chair first, because it'll pull the legs off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, that kind of happens. Um, anything else? <laughs> or is that you done? Uh, that's me done. I've got no movement left or anything, so... Cool. 
Um, Elganon, what are you up to? You've just been so, beaten or caught out or something. Yeah, um, you know, this is a problem. This is a very large thing that is in front of me. Uh, yeah. I suppose I will try to dispatch it. Um... I feel like uh, that I've, you know, being very aware of my own abilities, I feel like I've struck it, struck it a terrible blow with my lightning bolt. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit it with a full magic missile. Yeah. And... Yeah, three darts, all three, into its face. Very far, it rolled damage. I guess I have to roll them each individually, huh? Okay. So there's two. Um, so, oh, damage again. So second is two, total of three. So six total so far. Yeah. Still alive? Yeah, still alive. It looks pretty great up though. And another three, total of nine. Nice. Yeah, and it, it definitely looks a lot less healthy than what it did before. But it's still alive. No, that's not good for me. That's fine. <laughs> well, um, and before we jump into Victor's turn, I, oh, unless there's anything else you want to do. I mean, I gotta run. I'm gonna try and get away from it. Okay. Um... So yeah, then we'll get a get a swipe at me. Yeah. Do a flip. <laughs> do a no, flip. I'm just moving. I don't do flips. <laughs> so. All right. It does. It rakes at you with its claws. It rolls. Does a thirteen hit you? It do. Ish. Four points of slashing damage as it hits you. Hey. Hits you from behind as you move out of its range. Um, and before we jump into Victor's turn, I probably should have done this at the start of the round, but I think we're going to take another ad break. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And yes, we are back into combat. Um, I believe it is now Victor's turn. Oh no, I'm going to swim through the air again. No. <laughs> You'll get there in the end. <laughs> Do you have another baby to turn into a javelin? <laughs> Don't worry, I have something on my sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very dismayed looking man swimming through the air. <laughs> yeah. I'll get 15 feet closer. Yeah. Oh, this doesn't line up with the grid. That bugs me. That bugs me a lot. I know, I'm sorry. I don't sorry. like it at all. <laughs> um, we might have to have a discussion about that later. Uh, I don't like it. Anyway. And I'll... As I swim closer, sort of yeah. expand the moon energy. Do you know what? I'm going to give closer. you an extra, like, five feet just because at this point you've had, like, two rounds of swimming through the air and you've probably oh, what the hell? I'll take it. be a bit more efficient. Oh god, this one doesn't bother with the grid either. It's getting nice. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was actually finally swim up the creature, sort of roll myself back into a standing position, flick my wrist and a rape appears in my hand, and I just jab it into the back of the thing. Okay, go for it. Make me an attack roll. Nice. How do you want to do this? It would be a natural this? 20. I just, I've spent all this time getting over here. I just, as soon as I get to it, just stab it in the back of the head. Blade goes straight through. And it explodes and hits the ground. Um, you've managed oh, to get one critical point and it made a mistake. 
all of the potions splash up and stuff, but fortunately managed to avoid you. Also, I feel like Algernon's moving was probably a really good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that one is I now... Just, like, no one. tipped my blade towards Algernon in a jeweler's salute. <laughs> No and then turn around right. and start swimming <laughs> <laughs> the other way. How far off the ground is he now? <laughs> um, uh, probably like 40 feet or something. Like, you're getting pretty close to the ceiling. Um, oh, shit. On the brain said, if I get to the ceiling, I'll have something to pull against. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, there's plenty of ornate shit all over it for you to <laughs> drag yourself around. And there are people moving around up there and like casting spells and stuff, but yeah, it does seem a little bit out of control. Um, it's fine, that's everything from me. Can everyone roll me a perception check? I know we're in the middle of advantage, but just roll one. Oh no, I can't see. No, wait, I can't see. You can see really well, actually. <laughs> um. It's your elevator position, Victor. But all of the water, like all of the potions and liquids, they seem to be moving in a certain way. Serafina, you also kind of notice this from where you're standing on the table. And Mori, you kind of can a little bit, but it's very skewed and kind of difficult to see. Um, but all of the liquid seems to be moving around and kind of forming shapes. You can't quite make out what it is, but it does appear to do that. The other thing that seems to have happened while you've been fighting these things is that the golems that are blocking the doorway are basically melting to the point where people are now starting to clamber over them to get out. Unfortunately too though, to get to them, they have to walk through the potion. So there's some kind of bizarreness happening there with various curses and things that are occurring. And like every now and then someone will start floating up and maybe take that gracefully or not, depending on their personalities involved. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a thing that's happening. Um, Zeke, you don't notice anything because you're probably slightly distracted by other stuff, although you may notice that the golem close to you has kind of melted a bit. And... Oh no, wait, that was a... Sorry, that was a nat 20. I thought that was a perception roll. But yeah, Serafina, you definitely noticed that. Um, Algonon, you too a little bit. But... It's definitely... Things are... There's kind of weird shapes forming in the potions that may or may not be letters, but you can't necessarily make out what they are just yet. Potions have a message for us? <laughs> Apparently. Okay. Potions could talk. This entangled golem, who is not particularly enjoying life, um, is going to take a swing at you. Serafina, because you are the closest to it. Okay. I believe it does so at disadvantage because it is entangled. It's... It is restrained. Yes. Um, attack, and then we go disadvantage. Well, that's a bite, but anyway. Um, does a 12 hit? No. Okay. And it sort of futilely kind of lunges towards you, its teeth bared um, as it tries to bite you. But not really do anything. I believe now it also gets some sort of like strength saving throw. Uh, it has to use its action to escape and tangle, so oh, yeah, it okay. doesn't if it's using it to attack. That's fair. That is fair. Um, so yeah, it is now pretty much done for its turn. It's tried to bite at you and failed. Mari, what are you up to? Okay. I'm going to try and attack using Chill Touch again, the one that's entangled. Uh, I'm going to use my inspiration for the attack roll. And... Yeah, that's that hits. Um Okay. <laughs> I 
Yeah. How do you want to destroy it? Uh, well, since Chill Touch does necrotic damage, despite the name, uh, I think that I am just going to desiccate it until it is fragile and then smash. And it just explodes in a shower of weird crystal chunks. Um, there's a strange hissing sound from behind you as well as this occurs. Um, as the golems that are blocking all of the exits melt away into nothing. And people start trying to push their way through. It's difficult for you all to make out, um, although I think Victor probably has the best view of this, um, towards the centre of the room, but down maybe more towards the where the platform is. A kind of the, the all of the blue from the golems has started to form. Um, and from everything else that's kind of mixed in. And they start swirling and creating words that just says, Tains will pay. Tains will know the floor has a message. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny because you're the best one to see it because you're floating above it all. <laughs> from up here, I can see everything. <laughs> I can even see when you left my drink. <laughs> Jen, um, you're good, Mad? Uh, yeah, the USB my uh, camera's connected to randomly disconnected for some reason. I didn't actually notice until just then, sorry. That's okay. not good. Ooh. I think the Tain should pay for that, too. <laughs> and more of the people in the ceiling there's kind of this ripple that echoes around as this occurs but everyone's kind of focused on getting out except for the people who are currently floating around on the roof because they don't really have a way down as of yet um so in a bid to kind of keep this moving a little bit what basically the rest of the evening is spent cleaning the spilled potions off the floor um, trying to get the room back into a reusable or at least a safe place for people to exit. And as people are moving around and leaving this space where what is usually a night of merriment and not necessarily a chance to let one's hair down, but to at least put it into some fun styles and to experiment and meet with each other has since become more of a political statement become more of a thing where there is all manner of drama and no one's really quite sure who had posted this message or how it had come to be. No one's really sure either how um, how someone had managed to mess with what was supposed to be a night of merriment and festivity to announce an engagement who would be powerful enough to piss off the most powerful family in Shan? Who would be powerful enough to piss off the family that they're marrying into again? Who, who created the potions and the candy golems? And who spent all of that time creating this mess, I guess? So... Yeah. What... What murder and mischief are basically afoot is kind of like on everyone's lips. And it's, I guess the air is kind of a little bit of buzz. There's a little bit of horror and shock that someone would move against them. There is excitement and glee from some families who have just been waiting for an opportunity for the teens to fall, you know, stumble basically there's whisper of the morrows who suddenly became were basically excommunicated by the teens from the shan 60. there's all sorts of stuff swirling around much like the potions that have formerly been all over the floor whispers and 
stories and gossip and if you would like for any other information you will need to make a investigation or an insight roll. I'm still investigating the roof right now. No, you did come down. Somebody managed to get you off the ceiling. Oh, finally. Thought I was going to be up there forever. Um, but yes, it takes a couple of yeah. hours for everyone to start falling and there's a lot of like... Ooh. Um, Algernon does not hear anything beyond that. He is potentially too busy with Nikolai, who has kind of been <laughs> not particularly impressed. He's You finally tracked him down basically again and he's very unhappy about like just the entire situation right now but he's being very polite about it but he is not happy um so most of your attention is spent trying to like control one of your wayward wards um mm -hmm. Serafina you kind of like spend a little bit of time talking with your family and kind of going over a list of who would be capable of creating such magic but none of you are a hundred percent sure because, like, the potions and stuff like that are very much a... They, well, they're your family's business, but everyone's kind of a little bit in awe of what was created and how they were created, and no one's quite sure how, A, that many potions managed to be brewed and created and dispersed throughout the thing in such a potentially short space of time and how they managed to get like that and how they could have been messed with. Zeke, you're, you don't necessarily have a lot of um, information either. You're potentially a little bit impressed by the like magic that created the various golems and stuff and allowed for them to be so, I guess, flexible and stuff like that. But you're also kind of trying, you don't necessarily hear a lot of what you maybe would like to hear about you know, who possibly could have created them. Um, you are, however, very happy that your little, like, Eldritch Cannon thing worked, having made it from a goblet. And that might be something that you, like, proceed to keep and handle in future. Um, Mori. You get fleeting little pieces of gossip, and I will actually message you about this after the session. Um, for perhaps a couple of the rumours that are going around and you can choose to share those with the group or not. Um, but you do in fact hear things. Uh, Victor, are you going to make a roll or are you mostly just focused in being not floating? I do not care about the rumours of the ball. <laughs> Got off the roof. I'm just Very making cool. sure my sister is okay and then we are leaving because this place is weird. <laughs> that is fair. Um... She's really excited by all of this, by the way. Like, Also, I'm sure I had a cult when I came in. <laughs> this is the most um, exciting thing that's ever happened to her. And she is just like, oh my god, this was my first ball and all of this stuff happened. And what do you think the Tains My Pay Brother means? Like, <laughs> I don't know, but I'm covered in this sticky stuff. I had to swim through the air for like 10 minutes. I oh, didn't enjoy so this one. <laughs> How could you not enjoy it? I, I wish I'd got to float. It looked like a lot, so much fun. Yes, until the falling part. It was less fun. Somebody cast Featherfall on you, you're fine. I don't want to fall slow, but it feels worse than falling at normal speed. Um, and yeah. You're just little... falling for longer. That's fair. And yes, there's a little bit of, um drama and stuff like the banter continues until you head basically home and all of you make it back to your respective bed chambers you get changed out of your clothing and reflect I guess on an evening of revelry and excitement and a little bit of drama um so I call in my apprentices to start work on repairing my clothes yeah. after they've been damaged and cleaning them. 
Yeah. Um, which I give them leave to use magic if they choose to do so. Just, you know, don't make it worse. And one of them looks so, like, excited about this because, like, they hold up this, like, really bright green potion. And I'm like, look, Algonon, look, I made this. I'm going to, like, test it out. It's it's like a special laundry liquid for, like, potions and Wonderful. stuff. Wonderful. <laughs> oh so God. I, I asked, her, asked her handing... Um, I, I'm not sure which one it, it is that you want doing this, but after handing them the pile of clothing and whatnot, I take back my cloak of protection and I will take care of it on my own. You can test your potion on other stuff. And they look kind of a little bit devastated at this, but also like, yes, fair enough. I, I did burn for, through a few things testing this, so yes, no, thank you. And they scurry off with it looking like all of their Christmases have come at once because they have finally, like, they've tested stuff out on cotton and stuff, but they haven't necessarily had a chance to, like, test it out on finer materials. So I guess we'll find out how that goes next session. <laughs> um, <laughs> which... Is probably going to be in about two weeks from now. Um, yeah. And we will be with the attendance of the... Who are we? Ah, yes. Aaron's Crown. The 26th of, I believe, Dravago, which is another holiday. This particular one is related to knowledge and is one of the sovereign hosts. More religious things. So, yeah. Kind of uh, passage of time are we looking at in between? Uh, about 20 days. So, I'll okay. be in touch with all of you between sessions and hand out some gossip and some other things that may have occurred off screen, which we will recap at the start of the next session. Um, yeah. I, a few of you might have some letters to write as well. Um, yeah. And yeah, we will also find out the result of everyone's reputations after this ball. 